Good evening. It's wonderful to be with you for this special Christmas show, isn't it, Ronnie? Indeed it is. And in a packed programme tonight, Zandra Rhodes will be here to model her new ankle warmers. They're knickers without any elastic. <laughs> they will be entertained by the massed choirs of the Noise Abatement Society singing Silent Night. <laughs> But first, the news. Latest statistics show that 90% of all British women like shaking Stevens. On the other hand, 90% of all British men think he's old enough to shake himself. <laughs> and a disappointing cancellation tonight. The British Rail Catering Department's Christmas blowout has been postponed until April to give the sandwiches time to ferment. <laughs> And now a sketch which takes place in the cottage hospital on Christmas Eve. I play a man who comes in with a broken arm, and I play the doctor who gift wraps it. <laughs> oh, hello, Bert. Hello, what are you going to have? That's very kind of you. I'll have a pint. Of what do you want? A pint of light? No, a pint. Pint of brown? What? No, a pint. Pint of mild. No, a pint of bit. Pint of bit. Pint of bit. Pint of bit. Pint of Charlie, won't you? Yeah. So, how are you, Bert? Mass and grumble. Oh, yeah. Mass and grumble. I just thought I'd pop in on my way up to, uh... What, up the off licence? No, up to, uh... Up to what? Alcoholics Anonymous? <laughs> <laughs> no, up to uh, the dance match, you know, oh, up the club. Oh, a dance match, yeah. yeah. Oh, thanks, Charlie. Hey, Charlie. Well, cheers. Merry cheers. Christmas. Merry Christmas. Mm. Talking about Christmas, we had our Christmas party the other night, you know. Oh, yeah. Up the, uh, up the club. Yeah. Funny how we do it was. Funny old dude. It's always the same every year, you yeah. know. Always takes the form of an egg and... Uh... Egg and... Uh, what, egg and spoon race? No. Uh, <laughs> no, it takes the form of an egg and... Egg and, uh... egg and Rone banquet? No, no, no. No, an egg and chip supper. Oh, no. Yeah. Egg and chip supper, yeah. 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 You always take the wife along because yeah. she's very useful for laying the... Um... Laying the eggs? No. <laughs> no, 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 no. Very what? useful for laying the... What, um... laying the foreman? What? No. <laughs> Oh, laying the table. Oh, laying the table. Oh, that's yeah. Yeah, very nice. It's a very nice do. I must say, they do it very well every year, you know, because yeah. all the men get big cigars. Yeah. And the women get per... Um, Pickled? No, no, per... <laughs> pie eyed No, 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 no. Uh, picture hats. Oh, picture, picture hats, do they? Oh, yeah, that's very nice. Mind you, they also get pissed... Well, they would do this. <laughs> pistachio nuts. Oh, pistachio nuts. <laughs> pistachio nuts. Yeah. Oh, that's snob, wouldn't it? Yeah. Mind you, the beer... Beer was flowing like there was no uh... no whiskey left. <laughs> no, no tomorrow. Oh, no tomorrow. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm. I got chatting, you know, to that big Wendy from a couch. Oh, you know, big Wendy. Yeah, big yeah, Wendy. yeah, yeah. Got chatting about this and that. Yeah, yeah. Because she fancies me. I know. Oh, does she? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I know that. I know that. Because she once uh, offered me a bit of... Um... Bit of this and that? No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> bit, of... bit of this, that and the other? No, no. no, no. Bit, bit of the other without the this and that. <laughs> No, a bit of a seedy cake. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. In the canteen. All oh, right, yeah, yeah. Anyway, this night, she's she's leaned over, you see. Yeah. Give me a kiss on the cheek. Oh, yeah. Because, <laughs> of course, she'd already given me a kiss on the... Um... <laughs> <laughs> on the what? what? Uh, on the what? What's she, the... what she kiss you on? What? Okay. What? Uh, what? Uh, what? On the ear? What? On the, ear? No, on what? the, uh, on the face? No, no, no. What? On, on the, the other place? No, no. <laughs> no, on the Thursday. Oh, <laughs> Now, fortunately, the wife did not see that, because no. at that time she was out laying the... Um... Laying the tables. <laughs> no, laying the foreman, as it happens. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I was right the first time. <laughs> anyway, I was sat there, yeah. like you do, you yeah. see, eating my supper. Yeah. Pretended not to see, of course, yeah. but then I noticed her fingers creeping over, you yeah. see, and pinched one of my, um... Really? Yeah, she one didn't, did she? Yeah, 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 really? My, uh... Oh, God, yeah. yeah. Well, just the one, like, was it? Yeah. <laughs> well, I'd only got the two. Well, no, <laughs> Chips. And, oh, uh, chips. Yeah. Oh, chips, I see, yeah. Oh. I've got, got yeah. the wrong word about oh, there, yeah. So I say well, chips, yeah. Well, this, of course, yes, chips, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So she pinched it and popped it in her, um... In her mouth. No, in her, uh, popped it in her... Popped it, there's no one else to pop it, is there? She popped it in her handbag for later, oh, didn't she? Oh, handbag for later. I forgot my yeah. handbag, yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, that's what happened. Yeah. <laughs> then, of course, the boss got up and yeah. gave us the toast. Oh, you had toast as well as the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, the loyal toast. Oh, the loyal toast, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, the loyal toast yeah. to our great queen and all the... Um, all the little queens. We, <laughs> you know, all the dominions. All the dominions, yeah. You yeah. see, yeah. may she forever enjoy good health and be permanently protected from the dreaded... Um, dreaded lurgy. No. <laughs> no. The dreaded... What, what, um, dreaded corgi? No, no. <laughs> dreaded, dreaded, dreaded fergie? No, 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 
called the dreaded foe. Oh, the dreaded foe. Oh, yes, I know one. You yes, yes, I mean? dreaded foe. Then after that was all over, we had the usual dancing. Yeah, yeah. Of course, Wendy's only grabbed me again, hasn't she? Pulled me to one side. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Whispered in my ear. Yeah. She says to me, uh, you and I, she said, are meant for each other, she said. Of course, I am also a little sh... A little sh... A little, <laughs> a little short at the end of the week? <laughs> a little shy. Oh, a little shy, oh, yeah. Oh, she yeah. said, I am also a little shy. She, oh, said, yeah, right. she said, but if you are interested, after this dance, why don't you go to the bicycle shed, she said, and I should be round... Um, round at the back? No, no, I should... I should round be, the front and the back? No, no. <laughs> I should be round the back in the bushes, she said. Oh, really? Oh, oh, yeah. Of course, I went, yeah. There she was, reclining. Oh, yeah. She said, now is your chance, she said. You can now have anything you want. <laughs> and did you? Of course I did. Yeah. <laughs> I grabbed her by the hand. By the uh, handiest bit you can get hold of. <laughs> <laughs> Do me a favour, I grabbed her by the handbag and pinched me chip back. Oh. Not in tears. <laughs> I'd like to introduce our special guest tonight, singing a soon-to-be-released track from his new album, Live in Australia, where you welcome the marvellous Elton John. Goodbye, Norma Jean Though I never knew you at all I had the grace to hold yourself those around you crawl They crawl out of the woodwork And they whisper into your brain They set you on the treadmill And they made you change your name And it seems to me You lived your life like a candle in the wind Never knowing who to cling to when the rain set in And I would have liked to know you But I was just a kid Your candle burned out long before Your legend ever did This road you ever played How it created a superstar And fame was the price you paid And even when you die Oh, the press still hounded you All the was had to say Was the matter was found in the news And it seems to me You lived your life like a candle in the wind Never knowing who to cling to When the rain set in And I would have liked to know you But I'm just a key Your candle burned out long before Your legend ever did
talking the bridesmaids about. Get out there. Go and give her a dance. Of this I'm certain that it's... Oh, God. Oh, dear, look at that. Oh, God. Who's going to eat that now? Oh, here you are, Oh, don't mind your producer. I'm always partial to a slab of nuptial pork pie, you know. It settles the stomach after a sumptuous meal. Aye, happen there's nothing like as maybe these reapers. <laughs> <laughs> They certainly done nice Sharon Reaper with this wedding, do It must have cost you a package. Well, it's not every day you give your only daughter in wedlock, is it? Oh, no, no. There's no but Reap there. How much brass did do actually cost you then? Eh? Well, between you, me and the bed both purse, this has set me back nigh on 15 quid, and that's no lie. <laughs> 15? Aye, 15 quid, and that was money I was saving to build new pigeon loft, you see, the nose. Oh. Well, never mind, now Sharon's moved out, I can put pigeons in there, you see. <laughs> well, it's worked out proper champion, hasn't it, oh, eh? Oh, and it's not like us, maybe it has, but it's like us, not I. <laughs> hey, what's more, young pigeons, they don't play the pop music all neat, do they? No, of course not. No. This uh, lad she's married, he's a grand lad, this lad. Oh, what, yeah. What did you do then? Oh, well, he's self-employed. Oh, aye. Oh, aye, he's a burglar. <laughs> Fancy thy Sharon marrying one of these sorts in there. Well, I don't see it as losing the daughter. It's more a gain in a video recording than I was. <laughs> <laughs> very good, sir, very good. Mind you all has had plenty upstairs. Well, I've you? now got a music centre, a microwave oven. Hangman <laughs> knows what else the knows. Oh. <laughs> Tell me, listen, what's happened to yon Henry? Eh, Henry? Henry, yon pet pig you used to keep at home. You know, he must be no bit three hundred Oh, now. yon pig. Oh, he caused a tremendous domestic ruckus between Mrs and me sen, you know. No. Oh, aye, she reckoned I was modelly coddling him. Modelly coddling him? Aye, modelly coddling him. She reckoned <laughs> him sleeping on settee after he's had his dinner, she thought it were reet. Oh, well, they do get funny and finicky women at our age. Oh, I you? know they do, but I mean, that pig, you know, eventually come between Mrs and me. Aye. Oh, aye, and as we've only got a three-quarter bed, it, 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 it was a bit of a scoff, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine that. Yeah. Yes, I can't. So tell me what happened then. Well, I come up with a perfect solution, but my missus, she said she'd murder yon pig before she'd sleep in the spur room with motorbike. <laughs> Threatening poor pig like that. Oh, so where is he now? Is he back on Nitsity then? No, no, no. He's even now among us. Among us? Ah, you've not been eaten half of him. Come on. He's <laughs> Good cheer, the boss drunken Duncan is pickled, I hear. And outside some miners who've had too much beer are writing their names in the snow. They're writing their names in the snow. Alaska don't promise the bets Cause mining for gold down in holes is the pits And dining on whale meat sure gives you the shakes There's no Merry Christmas today There's no Merry Christmas today Hey, Crackies, Christmas Day We ought to have some kind of entertainment Come on, Charlie, give us a dance How about some music? Happy feet! I got those happy feet! I'm gonna live till 
I die. I want to hear temptation. A little recitation. I'll tell you a tale about the old Yukon Trail. It's a life full of strife. You can stuff it. Yeah. Men are real men out there. They don't wear underwear. They just sit on their assets and rough it. <laughs> Down in Fairbanks one day, I was having my way with a female who sure spoke the lingo. As my cold hands are placed around her big frozen waist, her knicker elastic went bingo. <laughs> Boys, boys, this is no time for frolics. The Leroy gang's in town. Where, where? Out there. Out there. <laughs> Looks like a showdown, fellas. The Leroy gang right outside. Sounds like they're coming in. Okay, gang, let's slam. Morning, hot shopping. You'll find me in your stocking. There ain't no Santa Claus. They call me Diamond Dickie, the talent scout. Yeah. I'd like to meet you. Hard. We'd like to meet you too. If you require some tricky, just point her out. Woo. We do take credit cards. I'd like to introduce you to our big star. She's just about to take a bow. So fellas, say hello. Professor Blow, the belly of the Yukon now. <laughs> See what the boys in the back room will have. I'm lonesome tonight, I declare. I do declare she's lonesome. Some now. of the boys are outside in the lab. They've gone for a wee breath of air. <laughs> so bring them back. Oh, oh, bring them back. oh come to mama. Come in this here town when I let down my hair It's me what the boys in the back room will have Each hour on the dot Each hour on the dot For two bucks a shot Only two bucks a shot I'll show them what's what and what's where She's what, 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 Someday these ways will be known as the good old ways. Folks of the future won't recall our names. Just faded photographs in old fashioned frames. They'll sit and talk the days when men were men and women were all stocking tops and stays. Remember, then through their memories they'll live again. The passion of those good old fashioned days you, you bet your bottom dollar. Someday these days will be known as the good old days. Someday these ways will be known as the good old days. So make the most of whatever you've got right now. Each day that passes won't come back anyhow. The here and now very soon becomes way back when. And life itself is just a passing phase. We'll never ever see the like again of those good old fashioned days. It becomes way back when And life itself is just a passing phase A passing phase We'll never ever see the like again Of those good old fashioned When passion was a ration Those good old fashioned days Silence in 
much more. Take the book in the right hand, read what it says on the card. <laughs> Christmas time is here again. <laughs> this is Joe and Holly. I wish you all you wish yourself, and may your day be jolly. <laughs> The other side of the car. <laughs> I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Love, Dennis and Mabel. <laughs> Morning. Afternoon. I've never seen you here before, have I? No, you haven't, no. How's that then? You've never been here before. Oh, <laughs> that's true, yeah. Uh, what's your name? That's right. <laughs> now, your name is what? Yes, that's right. What? What's my name? Don't you know either? <laughs> yes, what? Arthur what? Oh, I see. <laughs> what's your name? No, what's your name? You just told me. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's what? Arthur what? Yeah, you told me that, yeah. But I still don't know what is your name. That's right. What? No, that's you. <laughs> You're right, I'm right. Oh, we're both right. Yeah. <laughs> I still don't know what your name is. It's right, Leonard Wright. Oh, I see. Yeah. Here, I'll tell you what. Yeah, that's me. No, 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 no. Look, why don't we call each other by our nicknames? Right. No, that's my real name. <laughs> Well, what's your nickname? Lefty. <laughs> Lefty right? Yeah, that's right, yeah. <laughs> and you're what? Yeah, that's me. No, yeah. no, no. What is your nickname? Sixty. Sixty what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do you know this? My grandfather is still alive. Is he? Who's he? Hundred what? <laughs> Do you know he got married for the first time on his 100th birthday? Oh, did the Queen send him a telegram? Yes. And Prince Philip sent him a diagram. <laughs> <laughs> Who did he marry then? Some woman. Well, of course he did, of course he did. Never heard of anyone marrying a man, have you? Yes, I have. Who? My sister. <laughs> well, that's different, isn't it? That's different. Women are different. So they, so they tell me, yeah. <laughs> Oh, you've not had a lot to do with women, then. A lot to do with one woman. Bringing in the coal, doing the dishes, making the bed, terrible business. <laughs> Was you married to her? In a way. In what way? In the family way. <laughs> I caught with the butcher. She went unfaithful to me. How do you know that? Nine months later, she presented me with giblets. <laughs> oh. So you'll be alone on Christmas Day, then, will you? Yep. Just me and my pet turkey. Oh. What about Boxing Day? It'll be just me. <laughs> you going to eat him? No, he's going over to his mother's. Oh. <laughs> I always have a big party Christmas Day. Oh, who's that? Mrs Brace girl who lives down by the farm. <laughs> Great big bay windows and welcome on the map. Her husband's got a small holding. Oh, well, nobody's perfect. <laughs> Does she come over to help you out? Yeah, she comes over to help me out the pub closing time. <laughs> I've got Boxing Day off this year. Oh, what's your job then? I shoe horses. Do you? I shoe pigeons. <laughs> shoe? Yeah, I shoe like that. <laughs> Up the five acre field. Oh. I've got ten acres. Have you got land? No, these shoes are too tight. <laughs> oh, your toes, you mean? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, I see, yeah. Uh, these shoes are very tight, you know. Are they? You know, when I bought these shoes, they were so tight, I had to wear them a fortnight before I could get them on. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm off to pick some mistletoe. I'm after a girl in the village. Ooh, you got high hopes, have you? No, she's a tall girl. I've got low hopes. <laughs> <laughs> Here, I'll come with you. I know where it grows. Here. The girl I was with last night wouldn't kiss me under the mistletoe. Oh, why is that? She didn't like where I was wearing it. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> you. Here, here's a story about two chaps who have bought themselves a Rolls Royce each. Who said the government training schemes don't work? <laughs> <laughs>
I'll get a damn knighthood if it kills me. Anyway, <laughs> this story about these two chaps who have just bought themselves a Rolls Royce each. Probably the two who put a new washer on a tap for us last week. <laughs> Nigel and Kevin, we'll call them. That's not what I called them then, but that's what I <laughs> call them now. By the way, I must be honest, this isn't actually the joke I was going to tell you, to be honest, which had, you know, had more general interest. Because, to be honest, a lot of people haven't got a Rolls Royce. <laughs> now, now, I know I'm going against government figures here, but there you are. <laughs> what, but what happened was, I met the producer in the bar just before the show. He was sitting there, sipping his usual Bacardi and night nurse. <laughs> with two cherries and a Valium. <laughs> reading health and efficiency. <laughs> and he said, Ronnie Love, he said, Ronnie Love, what are you going to do for that bit of nonsense, you know, where you sit looking desperate? <laughs> I said, I'm going to tell a joke about a fairy. <laughs> Isn't it funny when you know you've said the wrong thing? <laughs> well, he let go of the barman's hand. <laughs> and he said, he said, I've just been told they are bringing back Bill and Ben, and if you're not careful, you'll be back in the flower pot. <laughs> anyway, that needn't worry you. Worries me, but it needn't worry you. So here is the story with no fairies. Just a couple of chaps who met up after a few years, and one of them, Kevin says, he said, I'm doing so well, he said, I'm driving a very expensive car, a Rolls Royce Silver Cloud, no less. And the other one, Nigel, says, call that expensive. When I bought my car, they gave me one of those for the kids. <laughs> I think he was a graduate from the Derek Jameson Charm School. Anyway. <laughs> and the other chap says, but this one, he says, believe me, has got some amazing extras. Like if I'm driving along the motorway in the rain and I start aquaplaning, a voice sings in quadraphonic sound, we're riding along on the crest of the wave. <laughs> and his friend says, to him, look, that is just a gimmick. My car, he says, has more practical extras. Like if I have a tyre blowout in the fast lane, the computer takes over, slows me down, onto the hard shoulder, stops, then practically drenches the inside of the car with Chanel number no. five. <laughs> well, the next time, the next time they, the next time, the next time they meet, one of them says, look, he said, I just bought a gadget, so that if I'm coming back from the club, and the old, you know, had a few, and the old driving's a bit dodgy, as soon as the old bill appears, a flagpole pops out with the Royal Standard on it. <laughs> and, and, they, and they think I'm the Queen Mum going to the races. So his friend said, that's nothing. He said, I've just installed a device in the old Royal that'll make you sick, he said. If I'm in trouble with the motorway patrol, he said, I press a button and that wipes my name off the police computer and replaces it with somebody else's. <laughs> Nigel said, that's incredible. Whose name does it put in? He said, yours. <laughs> so Nigel said, look, I'm getting a bit tired of all these gadgets, especially that one. So why don't we stop showing it off, you know, and get ourselves an ordinary car each and just go for the quiet life. A bit of comfort. Kevin says, a good idea. A bit of comfort, that's the thing. So about a month later, he, he's driving up the motorway and he spots Nigel's personalised number plates about four cars up ahead of him, you see. So he gets him on the phone. He said, Nigel, Nigel, is that you in the stretch limo, about four up? He said, I'm four cars behind you in a six-wheel job, he said. <laughs> Talk about comfort, he said. This is home from home, he said. Armchair, cocktail bar, 28-inch telly, quadraphonic sound, video recorder. His friend in the other cast, he said, don't tell me you got me out the bath just to tell me that. <laughs> It is an age of enchantment, 
of monsters and trolls, giants and ogres, Bernards and Mannings. <laughs> Feared more than any of these is a hideous hobgoblin of the forest, a demon of unrelenting evil, the tree sprite. <laughs> doing here? Get out of my bedroom! You should be outside in the forest! Turn it up, it's flaming freezing out there. I'm cold enough to freeze the conkers of a horse dress now. What is it, my dear? It's that ruddy tree sprite manifested itself in the bedroom again. Look, I'm not taking any more lip from you, Granny. Do you understand that? <laughs> I'm a dark demon of unrelenting evil. Yeah, you know, I could turn your husband into a hippopotamus, you know. You four-eyed little twiglet. You haven't got the nerve. Oh, ho, ho, haven't I? I can't understand that. Why is your husband not turned into a hippopotamus? Who said this was my husband? <laughs> no, you here before I shove a woodpecker up your knot hole. <laughs> As the tree sprite returned to its evil haunts in the forest, nearby there lived a poor woodcarver named Geppetto. Well, there's something you don't see every day. What is? A horse and cart being driven by a hippopotamus. <laughs> Good, my dear. What time is it? It's a long, long cat go. Oh. I only make it long ago. <laughs> my watch must have stopped. Mm. I must fix the cuckoo clock. Call that a cuckoo clock? It hasn't got a cuckoo in it! Well, of course it hasn't. They live in other people's clocks, cuckoos. Don't you know nothing? I know I'm fed up with all these wooden clocks and toys. Wood, wood, wood. Everywhere you look, wood. I'm a wood carver. What should I use, Lego? I'm sick and tired of wood. Wood, smud. The plates we eat off of wood. The glasses we drink out of our wood. Have you seen my reading glasses? Even your reading glasses are wood. Well, who needs glass anyhow? Wood is much more hard wearing. <laughs> Last week I asked you to carve the Sunday joint, and what did I get? I don't know whether to stuff it or creosote it. <laughs> no wonder our only son left home. Listen, Pinocchio left home because you're nagging him all the time. He's not made of wood, you know. Yes, he is. Oh, yes, he is. I forgot. <laughs> I wonder whatever happened to the little fella. <laughs> you know, they're making some a great puppet. By now, he could have been leader of the Labour Party. Call yourself a man. Then was the last time I was made love to. I don't know. I wasn't there. <laughs> All I ever wanted was a strong, virile husband to father my children. And what did I get? A senile old fool with a rusty chopper. <laughs> She's right. If only we could have another child. If only we could have another little boy of our very own. When you look upon a star Makes no difference who you are As we crickets, by Jiminy, I hate them. So that night, Geppetto went off into the forest to find some wood to build another little boy. And when he found a tree, he chopped it down and took it home. And when he got home, he took all the bits and he said... Wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm an old man, remember? Sorry. <laughs> ah, this looks like a good one. Thank <laughs> you.
It's a new little boy I've made. It's hideous. Well, it takes after his mother. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to call him Pinocchio. Our other little boy was called Pinocchio. I know. That's why I'm going to call this one Pinocchio too. Pinocchio too? <laughs> <laughs> Why can't we have them at the beginning of the picture? <laughs> now, he's almost complete. I just have one more hole to drill in the bottom. <laughs> you do, and you got a belt and a kisser. <laughs> <laughs> what sort of poncy clobber do you call this? <laughs> I see, I look like something out of a tyranny and knocking shop. <laughs> this cannot be. You can't talk and walk. I haven't put the key in your back yet. Key in my back? You trying to wind me up or something? <laughs> I will when I get the look. Don't get tasty with me, John. Not in the mood, you know what I mean? Where's my breakfast? I'm flaming starving. <laughs> look at the little fella. <laughs> Just like a real boy. <laughs> Blimey. All this porridge tastes more like glue. It is glue. I used it to stick your nose on it. <laughs> Don't talk to your father like that, or you'll feel the back of my hand, you ungrateful little tyke. <laughs> you do raise the back of your hand, you get the front of my boot and the back of your bustle, you dozy old pudding. <laughs> Opening time. I'm off down the pub. Pinocchio, whenever you leave the house, you must always remember to... Open the door first. <laughs> you say something, John. I wonder if they had this trouble with the flower pot men. <laughs> Till after two, you promenade with a big cigar. You tore the world in a private car. You dine hey. on chicken and caviar. And act and act for me. Yeah. Hey, keep it down for God's sakes. <laughs> Actors are all the same. Shows. <laughs> oh, get him, dear. <laughs> One egg over easy. Oh, I forgot you took the vow of silence. Yeah, you, barmaid. In a minute, I'm taking holy orders. <laughs> now, what is it? Look, what sort of tasteless, titchy grub do you serve here? We served you, didn't we? I'll have a drink instead. Can you, uh... Can you fix me up with a highball? Sorry, sir, we don't do plastic surgery. <laughs> Very good. Very good indeed. I like your style. You and I can get on well together. Look, 
I know this sounds fickle and capricious, what, but... What, what, what? I never date a man with woodworm in his ear. <laughs> Look at you. You're all made completely from bits of wood. Where did you come from? Well, I didn't come from flaming MFI, did I? <laughs> Stop it! Are you sure you're not just after my body? Of course not. <laughs> Are you sure you're not just after my soft, golden thighs and firm, pulsating bosom? Never. <laughs> hey, what's going on here? Oh, hanky or panky with the customers, is it? No, Mr. Stromboli, we were just... Get back to work with you and your broken nose. Get out of my tavern. Broken nose? Who are you calling broken nose? <laughs> You're sniveling a pepper squeak. You leave him alone. He's only a puppet. You stupid old man. Now that's what I call a man. <laughs> As for you, Squibber Features, get out! And so, while Geppetto tries not to lose his head, the evil Pinocchio has grabbed Gretchen and is headed back to his hideaway, hoping to make headway his way. Well, this is my place, darling. What say you and I make beautiful music together? All right. is a quartet. What's a quartet, then? Well, it's like a duet, only in a duet, two people play. And in a quartet, four play. Forget the four play, darling. Give us a kiss. What kind of girl do you think I am? Let go of me. You heard her, Pinocchio. Do as she says. You better get out of here, Gerson. It's not going to be a pretty sight. John, don't lose your head. <laughs> and so, Petto had finished, all that remained of the evil Pinocchio was a pile of matches. <laughs> and thus was the killer doll's reign of terror brought to an end. And once again, the men and women in the village were able to sleep safely in each other's beds. <laughs> Gretchen moved in with Geppetto as his housekeeper, on condition that when he died, she kept his house. 
Each day in his workshop, she dusted his equipment and attended to all his little vices. He soon found that having such a fresh young girl around the place had made a new man of him. Uh, uh, you know, Gretchen, this may sound corny, but uh, you've made a happy man very old. <laughs> And to think, we might never have met if it hadn't been for that evil puppet, Pinocchio. <laughs> what time, I thought he might take over. When it came to it, he was no match for you. Mm, and now, let's face it, he's a whole load of matches. <laughs> <laughs> At last, his fire is controlled. Coming soon, Pinocchio 3, the matches strike back. Well, that's all we've got time for, but here are a few announcements. Uh, in festive mood tomorrow, just as the Christmas lights are going on in Oxford Street, we'll be taking a party to Ireland's biggest lighthouse to watch them closing the curtains. <laughs> Finally, some late news. There was a big theft this morning from a factory that makes chocolates. Special centres have been set up, some of them hard centres and some of them soft centres. <laughs> and this evening, the police were said to be helping themselves during their inquiry. <laughs> And we have just heard that due to bad weather, the strike at Heathrow has been diverted to Manchester. <laughs> and finally, a message for the ladies. If an old gentleman with a long white beard tucked something in your stocking last night, it was Father Christmas. <laughs> if it happens again tonight, you've been goosed by a Chelsea pensioner. <laughs> Until then, it's a Merry Christmas from me. And a Happy New Year from him. Good night. Good night. <laughs>